Susan Rice was a top national security official during all eight years of the Obama administration. She was the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Then she became the president's national security advisor in 2013. Rice worked with President Obama and others to shape America's foreign policy and led the National Security Council. Her new book is called Tough Love, great title, My Story of the Things Worth Fighting For. It's published by Simon & Schuster, which by now, if you watch the show on a regular basis, you know it's a division <laughs> of CBS. We hope you watch the show on a regular basis. Susan Rice, we are so glad you're here. Lucky us that you are here on the day that the news is so much in your wheelhouse. I promise we'll get to your book. But first, we have to start with the news of the day. When you heard the president yesterday say that China should investigate the Bidens, what did you think? Truthfully? Yes. I couldn't believe it. I mean, every day we hear something new that causes you to say, did that really happen? This, for me, was qualitatively different. Because? Because the president of the United States was welcoming and inviting our principal foreign adversary to intervene in our election. Again, just as he did in 2016 with Russia. But here's the difficult problem with China. China is currently... No, you know, he denies that he intervened in the election. But he, okay. he can't deny he asked Russia to okay. intervene. Remember, if you mm -hmm. have those emails, yes, please. Yes, right. Yes. So it's the same thing. He gets on television before the world and asks China to give him dirt, which but, doesn't but he, exist but he, says this. He, he tweeted, he has the absolute right to ask other countries to investigate corruption. Why is that not correct? Well, first of all, this, there's no evidence of any corruption. Secondly, what he is saying to China is, look, we're in a hot trade war. You are doing things with respect to Huawei and security that give us great concern. But perhaps the implication is, if you manufacture some dirt that doesn't exist on Biden and provide it to me, maybe some of our problems can go away on the trade front, on the security front. That's what's so dangerous. He's, in effect saying to our farmers and our manufacturers and to all of us who have been suffering as a consequence of his trade war, that all could be well and perhaps be resolved on terms more favorable to China if he gets dirt. That was the clear implication. And one other thing, if I might, if you're China and you're listening to President Trump on the South Lawn make that statement, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You're Even thinking, if you've negotiated with them, what are, what are they thinking? that this man is not predictable, He's not stable. He's not playing with a full deck. And if, if they were being smart and never discount the Chinese ability to be smart, they'd think, well, maybe this is an opportunity to steal second base, whether that's in trade, whether that's in the South China Sea, whether that's in cyberspace. We are projecting insecurity, instability, and chaos to the rest of the world. So fair to say you don't think that the president has a genuinely held belief that... <laughs> Joe Biden and his son are potentially corrupt. I don't believe he believes that, but even if he did, political. even if he did, what we see consistently out of this president is that he is putting his personal political interests above the national interest. With Ukraine, he gets on the phone with the new president of Ukraine, a country that is under occupation and still in a hot war with Russia, and does no business on behalf of the United States, nothing to protect Ukraine, nothing to uphold the sanctions. It's all about... Can you help a brother out? What can you do for me? And that's the same with China. Can we talk about can we talk about the server surrounding this phone call? Um, and that the fact that the, that this the call itself, the information about the call was moved to a specific server, which is considered super classified. Uh, super classified. Explain to us what that server is. Well, most of the business that the National Security Council does is conducted on a system which itself is classified to a very high level. There is a separate system for the most sensitive materials that are considered compartmented, classified above the top secret level. And the kinds of things that that computer system is usually used for d do not relate to phone calls with foreign leaders. They relate to the most sensitive stuff that there is, which would I can't a, even get into, be honest. Would a phone call typically be moved? No, absolutely not. And it, it, in, in normal circumstances, I can't even conceive of a conversation that would get to that level of classification. But say it did, yeah. then because of the content of the conversation, it might be moved to a, a highly classified system. But only if the content warranted it, not because mm -hmm. there's something in there that for political purposes 
the White House wanted to hide. Or because a foreign leader, just because a foreign leader was involved. Oh, no, no, no. And foreign leader calls are, are typically uh, kept on the normal system. And what do you think about the president attacking the whistleblower? How much, how concerned should, the, should we be about that? And Mike Pompeo on the call, is that normal that the Secretary of State would be on the call, that the whistleblower was In my experience about? in the Obama administration, I cannot recall an instance, not one, where the Secretary of State was on a presidential phone call with a foreign leader. Typically, he would get a readout later and perhaps get the transcript. So but can't they do it differently in the Trump administration? It's, but, yes, Does it they, make it wrong? it's not a rule. It? Yeah. No, it's not uh -huh. a rule. It's unusual. Okay. And I gather also that the National Security Advisor may not have been on that conversation. That would be highly unusual. Mm -hmm. we, we learned this morning that Ukraine is going to revisit some of the claims against uh, the Bidens, even if they didn't break the law and there's no evidence that, that they did. I do remember uh, that it was politically awkward back in 2015 when his son was involved in the country yes. as he was uh, uh, dealing with anti corruption efforts. Did he mishandle the situation at the very least? Joe Biden? Yeah. Not in my opinion. Joe Biden was doing what he was asked to do by the president of the United States, consistent with serving our policy interests. Our policy interests that we were, sh were shared with the European Union and the IMF was to root out corruption. And this prosecutor that he was pushing on all of our behalf to have removed was a corrupt prosecutor who was supposed to go after corruption. So the difference here is very simple. President Trump, on the one hand, is asking Ukraine for a favor that benefits him personally and politically. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, on behalf of President Obama, the United States, and the Western world, was asking and pushing for uh, the removal of somebody who, on behalf of our policy, on behalf of our national interest. And that's the difference. And Biden did it transparently. Trump tried to hide it through uh, sequestering this. The, the, the reality we face... Tony, and what worries me so much, it gets back to your original point, Gail, is for the first time that I can remember, our democracy is under assault. Our country is, in effect, under attack. You write that in the book, but and you that still attack, believe. That attack is coming now from within. It's coming from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Right. And for all the security threats I saw as national security advisor, all the challenges we faced, I never thought I'd see that. All right, Susan Rice, thank you so much for being with us. The book is Tough Love. We'll be right back. Stay with us.